Within this inner earth, there is said to be several different human and non-human civilizations. Some of these societies may be primitive and even animalistic, while others could have technology more advanced than our own. Alternative history researchers believe that there are elements of truth to this story and have pinpointed a number of locations across the globe that can allow access to this hidden earth, including in Turkey, Iraq, and in multiple locations across Egypt. For hundreds of years, folk tales and travelogues told by the local Bedouin and foreign explorers in the Sahara have detailed real encounters with vaguely humanoid creatures like giants with heads made from their torsos to cyclopses, dog-headed humans, and other monstrosities. This is in addition to a string of unexplained disappearances, anomalous occurrences, and other high strangeness. It would seem that the Sahara is hiding frightening secrets beneath its sands that is tens of thousands of years older than the pharaohs themselves, and that these secrets may not only be remnants of one or more ancient civilization, but also gateways to worlds beyond our own. But exactly what are those worlds? Natural or supernatural? And should we be more concerned about the creatures that come from within it? In the 5th century BC, the Persian king, Cambyses II, dispatched an army of 50,000 men from Thebes to Siwa Oasis to threaten the Egyptian oracle of Amun, according to the writings of the Greek historian and geographer Herodotus. At some point in their journey, while crossing the western desert, every single one of them vanished without a trace. Until this day, academics and historians cannot agree as to why. Some believe that they met their ends in the Qatara depression several kilometers from Siwa, but this is just one of many enigmas to occur in this portion of the western desert. In the general area covering the dunes of Egypt and Libya, where Cambyses's men are believed to have vanished, a number of other significant disappearances have also occurred here. In addition to encounters with tribes of strange mythological and in some cases demonic looking humans have been documented in travel journals from as recently as the 1800s. These journals have included description of entire communities of non-human people with a variety of anomalous features, the most disturbing of which being the Asifali. Encounters with these beings was first recorded 2,500 years ago in the piece of work known as the History written by Herodotus. Here, he writes of creatures with eyes in their chests, native to Libya. Later in 45 AD, a Roman geographer named Mila wrote of a similar tribe of people in North Africa who also had their faces in their chests, a people kinda confirmed to exist by Pliny the Elder the famed Roman statesman and scholar, who refers to them by the alternative name, the Blemiae. Then in the 12th century, an explorer named Firmus claimed he'd found a tribe of men without heads, who again, have their eyes and mouth on their chests, and that these creatures were believed to be native to North and Northeast Africa. Decades later, the writer and explorer, John Mandeville, claim to have encountered the same, and they even appear in the travel logs of the famed explorer Sir Walter Raleigh and a number of other non-fiction work. Today historians assert that the Blemies were in fact a regular African tribe who formed a short-lived nomadic kingdom in northern Nubia after 600 BC. Eventually with the advent of Islam, 
they became Arabized and absorbed into the wider Arab culture during the medieval period. However, as we have shown, stories concerning these headless cryptids persisted throughout and after the medieval age, suggesting that the Nubian Blimmies had no relation to their supernatural counterparts beyond sharing the same name, a confusion not helped by the writings of Pliny the Elder. So hypothetically, if these creatures and one like them existed, and perhaps still exist, but remain hidden from the world, where could they have originated from? Within Islam, it's believed that there was a race similar to humans who came before man. Exactly what these beings were is a matter of debate. However, in some Arabic traditions, like in Yemen, they're believed to be a jinn-like species made from flesh and blood, and not too biologically different from the monsters that appear in the travel logs of Roman and later European explorers in Libya and Egypt. Some have theorized that the Asafali may have been alien, while a more rational explanation suggests that they were merely humans who suffered deliberate and severe anatomical modifications during infancy. However, a third option is that they did indeed originate from another world, but that world is beneath us and can be accessed by one or more hidden gateways within the Sahara, and those gateways may or may not be supernatural. There is a pseudoscientific idea known as energy vortices, a theoretical concept that states that there are specific areas across the planet that contain powerful concentrated sources of energy. These sources are often associated with ley lines, a globally aligned grid connecting ancient sites and megaliths that were consciously and subconsciously built by humans. This includes ancient monuments like Egypt's pyramids and the UK's Stonehenge, to even relatively modern day sites like cathedrals, large synagogues and mosques, etc as well as other man-made and natural structures. According to the theory, where these ley lines coverage, they form these vortices, powerful energy fields that can be tapped into by both human and non-human entities. Presumably, where these vortices are the most powerful, they are situated over or are responsible for creating gateways to other worlds, with the country of Egypt being pinpointed as a primary gateway to travel into a realm labeled as the Hollow Earth. Generally speaking, according to this bizarre concept, the Earth's crust is only a few hundred miles thick and inside there is a small central sun that provides light and warmth. In the previous episode, we spoke about the German effort in the 1940s to locate occult artifacts and locations that could help in their imperialistic efforts. One of these efforts concerned locating an entrance into this subterranean world via the Antarctic. Within this inner earth, there is said to be several different human and non-human civilizations. Some of these societies may be primitive and even animalistic, while others could have technology more advanced than our own. From this gateway, a series of subterranean tunnels connecting our two worlds are said to exist, theoretically allowing creatures like the Asafili and other types of nightmare fuel to come to the surface. In an article for Atlantis Rising, Brad Steger writes of the legends of the Old Ones, an ancient and scientifically advanced race that populated the surface world millions of years ago and then moved underground. According to Steger, this race predate Homo sapiens by more than a million years. Then, there are the reptilians that apparently first arrived on Earth in ancient times. These immensely intelligent, shape-shifting beings are said to have been covertly interbreeding with the human population in order to gain control of the world through subtle means, obtaining positions of power and influence as part of a long-term invasion plan. Then, there's the Elder Race, which sci-fi author Richard Shaver claimed to have met. He states that this race came to Earth from another solar system in the prehistoric past. 
but after some time living in the surface, they moved underground, where they built huge subterranean complexes. Eventually, they left our planet, leaving behind cities populated by mutated beings. One of the most common names given to the civilization of underground dwellers is Agartha. This name is first mentioned in the biography of a Norwegian sailor named Olaf Jansen in the early 1900s. According to the writer Willis Emerson, Jansen's ship sailed through an entrance to the Earth's interior via the North Pole, and for two years he lived with the inhabitants of the Agartha colonies, who Emerson writes were full 12 feet tall and whose world was lit by a smoky central sun. According to him, the inhabitants of Agartha were driven underground by several cataclysmic events and conflicts taking place on the surface of the earth. Unsurprisingly, he was admitted to an insane asylum upon telling his family his adventure. However, today in the 21st century, alternative history researchers believe that there are elements of truth to this story and have pinpointed a number of locations across the globe that can allow access to this hidden earth, including in Turkey, Iraq, and in multiple locations across Egypt. According to the occult researcher, Dr. James Hurtak, one of these entrances exists beneath the Giza Plateau itself, consisting of a gateway to a constructed tunnel 30,000 years older than the Egyptian civilization itself. Another location where one of these gateways are said to hypothetically exist is in the Katara Depression, the world's largest sinkhole, covering 7,500 square miles near the Egyptian-Libyan border, and the theoretical location for the vanishing of Cambyses II's army, and numerous other unresolved disappearances. Here, the lost city of Zerzura, our alternative to the Hollow Earth concept, is also theorized to exist. According to Saharan folklore, this was a technologically advanced nation with extreme amounts of treasure that either predated or ran alongside the first ancient Egyptian pharaonic dynasties. Even though all traces of it have vanished, till this day, it's believed that it remains enchanted, possibly hidden from the world via magic and guarded by both the jinn and powerful black giants. And while this may sound like a fairy tale, it was also something governments in the early 1900s were investing huge amounts of money into finding. At the beginning of the 20th century, the existence and location of the city of Zerzura was taken very seriously in Western academia, with high-profile publications such as the Journal of the Royal Geographical Society publishing several papers discussing the potential historical, economic, and political impact the discovery of this city could have on Africa and the Mediterranean. In 1934, the society even published a paper that directly connects this lost city, said to be guarded by the jinn and giants, to not only the Qatara depression, but also the mysterious disappearances of those 50,000 Persian men belonging to King Cambyses, According to the geographers Hubert Penaderil and Richard A. Berman, this evidence can be found in Egypt and Libya's Jilf Kabir, a location that is also famous for being home to the Cave of Monsters, locally known as Kahf Fucini, where 7,000-year-old drawings, including that of strange entities, can be found. Some of these entities match the description of the creature travelers claim to have encountered in later centuries. So, could the lost city of Zerzura be home to these monsters? Writing for Saudi Aramco World in 2002, the journalist Robert Burke states that the oldest records of a location with this name is found in a document dating to the mid-13th century written by the Emir Osman al nabulsi regional administrator of the Fayyum governorate. However, the most important reference point for this city can be found in the legendary 15th century grimoire, Kitab al-Kanuz, or the Book of Treasures. 
This book that contains over 400 sites in Egypt that hold hidden treasures and details the incantations and spells needed to ward off the jinn that guard these treasures, describes the Zura as a white gleaming metropolis, an advanced civilization that is as beautiful as it is deadly, filled with great wealth that has now since been abandoned. The book advises any treasure hunters and tomb raiders who manage to get past the guarding jinn to also be wary of the giants who guard the city as a whole. While the origins of the story is unclear, Herodotus speak of a legend known as the city of Dionysus that is also lost in the desert sands. Some historians say that Dionysus and Zerzura are the same place. However, the story is believed to have originated in the folklore of the Tuyaric people, a nomadic tribe that has roamed the Sahara for centuries. These nomads believe that the Zerzura was a place of great wealth and power, and that only the pure of heart could find and enter it. Eventually, Zerzura was destroyed and lost beneath the sands. Some versions of the legend suggest that it all fell due to a natural disaster, while others believe that it was cursed by ancient Egyptian gods. But what if there was a third option, that being the aforementioned cataclysmic conflict referenced in the Agartha myth? In 1932, Patrick Clayton discovered a geological anomaly where an unusual type of glass had been formed across the Sad Plateau in Egypt. This glass was used in royal Egyptian jewelry and was later found to be older than the earliest Egyptian civilization. Some scientists have proposed that the likeliest cause of this glass came from the meteorites exploding in the atmosphere, causing glass rocks to explode several miles above the surface of Earth. However, Others have suggested that it was one of many atomic blasts across the Sahara, evidence of which can be found in the Dundara Temple complex in Egypt, which has stone steps that appear to be inexplicably melted. Mythical texts spanning from Western Asia to South Asia independently tell stories of a large-scale conflict that have had devastating impacts on their people and the environment in a manner that seem eerily similar to what modern day exchanges using atomic weapons would look like. Did that conflict contribute in turning the Sahara from green to desert? Well, that's a topic for another episode. In conclusion, even though science is just beginning to scratch the surface, pun intended, with a 2014 study demonstrating that a large ocean may have existed below the Earth's crust. What about the more fantastical elements of this belief? Could those gateways to those worlds where strange beings are said to exist be extra-dimensional, existing on another plane of reality? There are anecdotal stories concerning visitors who have entered this realm, being displaced in time, emerging years later. If these are true, then maybe one day we'll see the return of Cambyses II's army in the modern age. But in all seriousness, what do you think? Leave your comment below and share your opinion. Thanks for watching. Do the usual like, share and subscribe. And look out for the next episode.